Hey, it's Mike here, and today I figured we'd do a bit of a case study on an instance of vegan failure. A longtime YouTuber of Nisian, who was vegetarian for life before that, recently failed on his vegan diet stint, citing physical symptoms. This is where the video gets a little serious. I started to have physical repercussions. Which we'll get to in a bit, but he even had help from big vegan YouTubers like Vegan Gains and Freely, and he blamed this whole failure on Freely, which is clear from the title, What Freely Did To Me. Now, it doesn't seem like Onision wants to just hop right back on a vegan diet, and that's one thing, but I think this is a great opportunity to learn from his mistakes and challenges and see how they relate to the scientific literature. Challenges which are pretty dramatic for three ish weeks on a vegan diet. Here. When I stretched, it felt like my chest was going to rip in half. That was just the feeling of your heart, finally opening up to the horrors of the dairy and egg industries. Just kidding, but. And I was contacted by a lieutenant colonel who said that uh, that was because of a lack in protein. He says right there in the description that the cartilage in his chest was weakening due to a lack of protein. He was vegan for about three weeks. And wait a second, there's a, there's a little bit of a hole, a little hiccup in the story here, Onision, come on here. It felt like my chest was going to rip in half, okay? And that's a feeling I haven't had since I was a meat eater. So since he had this while he was eating meat too, then to say that this chest issue is a result of protein deficiency is to declare that he was also protein deficient on his meat diet, and I don't think that Lieutenant Colonel Sanders would agree with that. Now we're gonna run some numbers in a second, but virtually any source talking about a protein deficiency talks about first symptoms as losing hair, swelling of limbs, total muscle weakness. It's not first sign of protein deficiency, your chest begins to crack in half. And the idea that a vegan diet puts you at a risk of protein deficiency inherently is just completely out of date. Looking to this study, long-term vegans had higher blood levels of protein than omnivores. That means they have more free blood protein to use to rebuild things like cartilage. And that is likely due to their lower inflammation levels because inflammation eats up extra proteins. This is very pertinent because if he actually had costochondritis or inflammation of the sternum, which is apparently not that uncommon or that serious usually, to this study, again, but more specifically, people put on a vegan diet had 30% lower levels of inflammation than they did at the beginning of the study. 30% drop. So was it caused by the vegan diet? Who knows, it's impossible to know, but my hunch is that he was going, oh, how am I feeling on this vegan diet? I don't know, oh, my chest feels kind of weird when I stretch. So we can't really speak conclusively to this chest thing, but we can speak conclusively to the protein issue. So to put the nail in the coffin, let's look at some actual numbers of protein, some amino acid numbers that are pertinent to Onision. All right. He said the main difference when going vegan is that he took egg whites out of his diet. I stopped eating egg whites, which was primarily what I consumed that wasn't uh, vegan. Let's look directly at the essential amino acid content of egg whites versus some commonly eaten plant foods. Essential amino acids, again, are ones that our body needs to get from food. Let's say he was going crazy and eating five egg whites in one sitting. That's what that would look like. And how about a half a block of tofu or something? There very comparable. The tofu actually passes 100% for four of the amino acids, while eggs is only three. Then of course, vegans eat more than one type of food. What a novel idea. I mean, look at a cup of black beans and maybe a cup of brown rice, and that will look like this. That's less than 500 calories total, less than a full meal, and about a quarter of what the average person needs to eat in a day in terms of calories, and that's six foot one male protein requirements. I should mention he also said that he was having some energy issues. Another negative side effect of the veganism, again, was lower energy. Anything involving exercise in general, I was suffering. The general trend is the exact opposite, and we're seeing elite athletes going to a vegan diet to improve performance. From the recent Olympics, we have Morgan Mitchell from Team Australia who set a personal best after she went vegan. We have runners like Scott Jurek who had the US's record for the longest distance run in 24 hours at 165. 0.7 miles, that's in one day. And then there are also people like Carl Lewis who set a world sprinting record on a vegan diet. After he went vegan, his performance went up. And no, it definitely wasn't a lack of protein that was making him tired because protein in terms of total calories burnt only accounts for a very small amount. It's mostly carbs and then fat. And that's why it was probably really just from him not getting enough calories. Basically all of his problems here are not enough calories. 
becomes clear pretty quickly that he was on a sort of starvation vegan diet, and many of his symptoms were just symptoms of calorie restriction. To his food Instagram, you can't actually be listening to Freely's advice and eat this breakfast that he had at YouTube Space LA, which was literally a banana and a couple minuscule slices of pineapple. Typing this into chronometer and being generous with the pineapple portion, this is, re this is hardly reaching 150 calories. When I asked her what was an appropriate thing to have for breakfast, she said like, I think it was 10 to 12 bananas. Nobody, nobody does that. Okay, I'm trying to go easy on him because I think he gave a pretty honest effort but in this situation, I don't think he did. He's taking the advice from Free the Banana Girl, which I have my own issues with, but she was saying, eat 12 bananas for breakfast, and he is blaming her for failing on a diet, and he's eating one-tenth the amount of the calories that she recommended him to eat, so that's kind of not fair to her. Next one, I'm not sure if this was an entire meal, but to type it into chronometer generously, at about half a zucchini, three button mushrooms, two sticks of asparagus, one spear of asparagus, by the way, is three calories. That's ridiculously low. And then to add some extra in there, let's just say there was a tablespoon of oil on there. So at best, 150 calories from a purely calorie perspective, that is worse than concentration camp rations, actually. How about this one? Seaweed salad, it looks kind of like noodles, but just like the case of zucchini noodles, there's there's hardly any calories in there, and that, you know, five or six pieces of veggie sushi is also hardly any calories. We're looking at a meal that's like maybe 300 calories, 400 calories, not enough. And this really is a recipe for feeling like ass. If you don't take in enough energy, you just won't have enough energy. But he did have some pretty good meals in there. The problem is it's about how much energy you take in in a day, how many calories you eat in a day. So how many calories would somebody like Onision require? Okay, let's go over to my website, plantspace.org and look at the calorie needs calculator, which I made for this exact reason. Okay, so Onision says that he's 165 pounds, and then I'll just guess that he's like 5'10". Looks like he could be 5'10". By the way, thanks to those that let me know that the foot drop-down menu is broken, I fixed that. Okay, so the result, his basal metabolic rate calculation, his calories burnt at rest if he laid in bed all day, is 1,700. And if he is sedentary, he needs about 2,000 calories. Exercising one to three times a week is, you know, 23, 75-ish. Three to five times a week, which everybody should do, is almost 2,700 calories per day. So I would not be surprised if he was running at an 800 to 1,000 calorie deficit, judging by the meals that he was eating, which were, you know, 400 to 600 calories on average. It also looked like he was having some sexual issues that the exhaustion made its way into the bedroom, apparently. When it comes to self-gratification, okay? Like for a man gratifying themselves, I hope you understand what I mean by this. When your heart hurts and you get tired from that, something is horribly wrong in your diet. This again is probably a lack of enough calories to run your body situation, but it brings me to an interesting point, and that is that when a male starves, their testosterone drops, it plummets. From this book, interestingly, if you keep going with starvation, it can reach a point which is known as castration syndrome. And more importantly, a bit of a tangent to Onision's particular problems, but it appears that the trend of what is happening with men going vegan is that they are reversing their erectile dysfunction. And I've met several dudes, some surprisingly young, that tell me that diet has actually solved this problem for them. Yeah, it's not all physiological, sometimes it's mental, but during Caldwell Esselstyn's whole food vegan trial, they observed several men reversing their erectile dysfunction, which makes sense. Anthony and the other male patients also noted another change. When you're young, when you're a teenager, you see uh, a female and so on, it gets kind of excited. Raise the flag, I call it. This happened to us, uh, all the other uh, Dr. Esselstyn's, uh, I call them uh, all the guinea pigs. Which makes sense because they were unclogging arteries in that study, demonstrating it, and clogged penile artery is a cause of erectile dysfunction. Of course, I have a whole video on that, but let's move on to his most peculiar idea that I absolutely need to refute. Here he is. I was raised on vegetarianism from like zero to 12, to my knowledge. I was a vegetarian, so the fact that the diet would be compatible with my body makes a whole lot of sense. Okay, this is definitely not the most science-based theory, and I normally don't like anecdotes too much, but I have to mention Nimai Delgado, who was raised vegetarian, eating those eggs and that dairy, and then he went vegan and became a professional bodybuilder, and now he's super jacked. Look at him. 
His body was clearly not just magically dependent on dairy and eggs. And moving on, he has the same logic for red meat eaters. Some people have been eating almost nothing but red meat since they were 10 years old, okay? So going strictly vegan after that might kill you. Like not literally kill you, but it might really, really hurt you, okay? You might uh, become anemic or you might otherwise just be super deprived in one area that causes serious physical repercussions. Okay, let's go back to Esselstyn's trial for a second. He took people with advanced cardiovascular disease that were eating meat. So when he took them off meat and put them on a whole food vegan diet, so maybe maybe like most of them or a part of them just responded horribly because they were dependent on meat. No, the 177 people who stuck on the diet had virtually no heart attack or stroke over the next 12 years. And those that didn't stay on the diet had a 60% percent rate of adverse events like heart attack and stroke. All right, now to his next problem. He doesn't like taking supplements. Vegan Gains also gave me advice and Vegan Gains gave me a good suggestion for a supplement. The problem is, is that I hate supplements. I hate them. Which is understandable, but as a vegan nowadays, you don't need to pop pills. You can easily grab some fortified foods or milks that are fortified in the same way that cow's milk often is nowadays. And he mentioned in the video that Vegan Gains had recommended some type of supplement that tasted bad. It made it seem sort of like it was a protein supplement. In case it was, let's look to some bodybuilders that don't take protein supplements that are vegan, like Robert Cheek and Derek Tree Size. If they can get that jacked without protein supplements, you can at least get enough protein to relieve yourself. I do not want to be a person who is eating in a way that's not natural. Okay. Well, we are a bit past that. And is it natural to drink lactations past infancy? How about sucking them out of another mammal or accelerating the reproduction process of a bird, a chicken by about 20 times so you can get more eggs or going to the grocery store and buying food that is wrapped in solidified petroleum, also known as plastic. Just the sheer number of unnatural things that Onision clearly probably doesn't care about. And then all of a sudden, yes, has to take a little supplement and a vegan diet and that's, that's it. Can't do it. And if you absolutely wanted to get natural sources of B12 on a vegan diet, you could just go and drink untreated water. From this study, they tested lake water. And in most cases, you can meet your B12 requirements by drinking half as much water as you're supposed to drink in a day, just one liter. Or you can eat trace amounts of poop. But appealing to nature just has severe limitations. It's a justification for basically anything, for cannibalism, because it happened in the past. And honestly, our ancestors did not live very long. And his conclusion is, funnily enough, the same as Z-Dog's conclusion in his What the Health video, that there is no one-size-fits-all diet. That, you know, eating an all-vegan and all-plant diet might work for you, but not for me. Is that it's important that you are the diet that you're supposed to be. Okay, and we're not all supposed to be the same diet because not all of us can handle it. Like some people are zebras, some people are lions, and some people are adapted to require egg whites because of some magical process that occurs between the age of three and five. No, the general trend is that it works for a variety of people from all backgrounds. From this study, vegans have 15% lower mortality rates. That's 15% less death. They also have 16% less cancer. They have 29% less female cancers, 50 to 75% lower levels of high blood pressure, and 78% lower risk of all diabetes. As for vegetarian, risk for certain reproductive cancers can go up, likely because of the hormones in dairy. And cheese is the single main source of saturated fat in the U.S. diet, and eggs is the single largest source of cholesterol in the U.S. diet, responsible for about one quarter of all cholesterol consumption. Which is probably why Onision is eating egg whites, but once you open the egg yolk gates, they're, they're in everything, they're in all the baked goods, and just, they're everywhere, they come for you. You should not sacrifice yourself because you want to save the animals, you want to save the earth. You are one little person. So no, it's not a choice between your life and animals' lives. It's a choice to lower your risk of mortality and then not pay people to kill animals or exploit them really hard in the case of vegetarianism. In the end, I applaud Onision for reaching out for help, but there are just a couple little tweaks that could have made him easily succeed on a vegan diet. Even just doing a day or two on Chronometer, he would have been able to see how he was not eating enough calories and gotten an idea for where he could get those calories, and then also get to see those amino acids just shooting past the daily requirement and just eradicating that protein fear, which is just irrational at this point. I also want to mention that shifting to a vegan diet is learning how to eat a whole new way. He was raised vegetarian. It took him decades to really get an idea of where to get his food, learn from his parents how to eat that way. And so it's not a shameful thing to take, you know, a month or two to learn how to get your vegan diet down properly. That's just not that big of a deal. 
He also probably would have benefited from watching a variety of vegan what I eat in a day videos just to get an understanding for how vegans eat day to day. So in conclusion, humans just don't magically become obligate eggivores that require eggs to survive. And he just needed to eat more calories. Look at what he was eating. And so let me know down below, what do you think? Do you think Onision's chest pains were magically caused by a vegan diet? Okay, if you haven't already, feel free to check out TIY or Tiny It Yourself, our YouTube channel where we are building a tiny house and we're making progress and we have crazy videos coming out like how to make your own double pane windows. If you're interested in that, go subscribe. Also subscribe here if you haven't already and hit that notification bell and smack that like button. Only smack it once though, otherwise it'll unsmack. All right, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.